When most people hear of histamine, they think of allergies, so maybe itchy eyes or a runny nose. But histamine is also a neurotransmitter, and when your body can't clear it properly, it can seriously affect your mood, anxiety levels, sleep, and even your ability to focus. And there are certain genes that actually make it difficult to break down histamine, which can make you more prone to mental health symptoms. But the good news is that by taking a genetic test, you can have the powerful insights into how your body processes histamine, and that could be the missing link into your mental health care journey. So in today's video, we're gonna unpack what histamine is, the genes involved in histamine breakdown, how this shows up in your body and brain, and most importantly, what you can do about it. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Giselle Rosa, a board certified psychiatric nurse practitioner here to help you optimize mental health through genetics and integrative and functional medicine using a skills before pills approach. So what is histamine and histamine intolerance? Well, histamine is a chemical messenger involved in multiple body systems, like your immune response, digestion, and brain signaling. So when you eat histamine rich foods, or your body releases histamine during allergies or inflammation, your body normally breaks it down to keep levels balanced. And there are two key enzymes that do this, DAO or diamine oxidase, which is mainly in your gut, and HNMT, which is histamine and methyltransferase, which is mainly in your brain and tissues. So when these enzymes aren't working well, either due to genetic variants, gut health issues, toxic overload, or other factors, Histamine can actually accumulate, and this is called histamine intolerance. And symptoms of histamine intolerance are very broad, and they often overlap with mental health issues. So the primary mental health symptoms that you'll see with histamine intolerance include things like headaches, anxiety, panic attacks, brain fog, irritability, mood swings, and insomnia. It can even worsen conditions like ADHD, depression, and PTSD, particularly when it's compounded by genetic and environmental stressors. And because histamine interacts with dopamine and serotonin pathways, high histamine can actually feel like a stimulant overload, where you may feel wired but tired, edgy but exhausted. And there are also physical symptoms that you need to be aware of such as a flushing face or red face, hives, eczema or itchiness, heart palpitations, dizziness when standing, and chronic post-meal fatigue. And these symptoms combined with anxiety or brain fog can actually point towards a histamine intolerance. And so these are the main histamine-related genes, starting with DAO or diamine oxidase, which helps break down histamine in the gut. And certain variants can actually lower this DAO activity. And low DAO means more histamine in your bloodstream after eating, which equates to bloating, anxiety, and even migraine symptoms. Then there's the HNMT gene the histamine and methyltransferase. And this helps break down histamine in the brain and tissues. And certain variants of this gene may lead to slower clearance of histamine, which could lead to agitation, insomnia, and irritability, especially under stress. Then there's the COMT gene, or the catecholomethyltransferase gene. While not directly a histamine gene, but important for methylation, if COMT is slow and HNMT needs methyl donors to work, that can indirectly lead to histamine buildup. Then there's the MTHFR gene, FUT2, NQ01 gene, and these genes affect methylation, B vitamin absorption, and oxidative stress, all of which can influence histamine breakdown efficiency. And the thing is that many people don't just have one of these genes they'll often have a combination of them, which really impacts their histamine tolerance and can lead to poor mental health. So how does histamine intolerance link to poor mental health? Well, elevated histamine, especially in the brain, contributes to neuroinflammation, a key driver of anxiety, depression, and cognitive symptoms. 
You see, histamine activates H1 and H2 receptors in the brain, which affect arousal, anxiety, and your sleep-wake cycles. So too much histamine can actually lead to restlessness and insomnia. And people with genetic predispositions to poor histamine breakdown often experience heightened anxiety, mood swings, panic attacks, brain fog, and poor stress resilience and stress tolerance. Histamine also interacts with other neurotransmitter pathways. For example, if you have a COMT variant slowing dopamine breakdown combined with high histamine, your brain chemistry can become even more unbalanced. And so what makes histamine intolerance worse? So if you're dealing with high histamine issues, it is important to know what to do to lessen this impact and to understand what can make histamine intolerance worse so that you can avoid worsening your symptoms. So starting with hormones. You see, estrogen downregulates that DAO enzyme activity, meaning women are more prone to histamine symptoms, especially before their period and during perimenopause or while using birth control. So if you notice that anxiety or insomnia worsen around your cycle, histamine may actually be part of that picture. Then there's medications. And certain medications interfere with histamine breakdown, like the NSAIDs, like ibuprofen, or your proton pump inhibitors, like acid reducers, like omeprazole, and some antidepressants, namely the MAOI inhibitors and tricyclic antidepressants, and antibiotics like penicillin and cephalosporins. So if you're on these medications and you're noticing worsening symptoms, it may be worth discussing alternatives with your provider. And then there's environmental triggers, such as dust mites, mold, pollen, and even strong chemical fragrances can cause mast cells to release histamine, especially in genetically sensitive individuals. So a tip here is to invest in an air purifier go fragrance free and inspect for hidden mold if symptoms persist. And if you just let histamine intolerance symptoms persist, there are actually long-term risks of unaddressed histamine overload. So it's always important to address it because you could end up with chronic neuroinflammation, increased risk for autoimmune conditions, gut lining damage, which can contribute to IBS or SIBO. You can have a higher risk for chronic fatigue, migraines, and even early cognitive decline. So this isn't just about feeling better today, it's about protecting your long-term brain and body health. And so here are some practical strategies to support histamine balance based on your genes if your genetics do indicate variants in HNMT, DAO, or methylation genes. Tailoring your approach to histamine intolerance is crucial for better mental and physical health. And so here are some detailed practical strategies that you could actually try today. Starting with your diet. So you wanna focus on fresh, low histamine, anti-inflammatory foods. So avoid high histamine foods. And these include things like aged and fermented foods that accumulate histamine during storage or fermentation. And examples include things like aged cheeses, like your cheddar, Parmesan, Gouda, fermented foods like sauerkraut, kimchi, kombucha, even soy sauce, miso, or yogurt, and processed and cured meats like salami, pepperoni, and smoked meats. And of course, avoid alcoholic beverages, especially red wine and beer, and certain fish that are not fresh but canned, like tuna, mackerel, or sardines. And also vinegar-containing foods like pickle and even condiments like ketchup and mustard. You also want to emphasize an anti-inflammatory diet with fresh foods and focus on foods that help reduce systemic inflammation and support your gut health, such as fresh vegetables, leafy greens, spinach, kale, your cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, cucumbers and carrots, and fresh fruits with low histamine potential like blueberries, apples, pears, and high quality proteins like fresh chicken, turkey, fresh caught fish not canned or aged, and pasture raised eggs. And also make sure to include healthy fats like extra virgin olive oil, avocado olive oil, flax seeds, and chia seeds. And also make sure to include the anti-inflammatory spices and herbs like turmeric, ginger, rosemary, and basil. 
It's also important to balance your gut health, especially if you have DAO related gene variants. Gut health is critical because many histamine reactions actually start in the gut and a diet rich in fiber and prebiotics like garlic, onions, asparagus, and leeks can nourish beneficial gut bacteria without adding excess histamine. And when it comes to probiotics, choose your probiotics wisely. Many probiotic strains produce histamine as part of their metabolism and can actually worsen histamine intolerance symptoms. So it's important to avoid these strains if you have histamine intolerance. And instead, consider probiotic strains that are actually histamine degrading or neutral, such as these strains here. And always introduce probiotics carefully and monitor symptoms. In some cases, supporting gut healing first with diet and nutrients before probiotics may actually be better. And then there are supplements that we can use to help target histamine support based on your genetics. So with DAO enzyme supplements, these can be taken before meals and they can help degrade histamine in the gut. And products often contain purified DAO extracted from porcine kidney, useful for those with DAO gene variants. And then supplements for methylation support for HNMT activity. Since HNMT uses methylation to break down histamine, you wanna make sure to support it with things like methylfolate, methylcobalamin, uh, pyridoxal 5-phosphate, which is the active B6, because these help to ensure sufficient methyl donors for histamine degradation in the brain. And lastly, SAMe. HNMT actually uses SAMe as a methyl donor to deactivate histamine. So if you have a reduced function of the HNMT variant, your ability to clear histamine may actually depend on how much SAMe is available. And I actually have a video on all of these nutrients and when it comes to supporting methylation, I would start with the B vitamins first before adding in SAMe just to avoid reactions. And if you do start adding in SAMe, do so gradually. And I'd advise that you go ahead and check out the videos on each of those nutrients. And now moving on to natural antihistamine supplements. Well, first up is quercetin, which is a flavonoid that stabilizes mast cells, which help reduce histamine release. And then there's vitamin C, which actually enhances DAO activity and acts as an antioxidant to reduce inflammation. And bromelain, which is an enzyme from pineapples that can actually decrease histamine release and reduce inflammation. And lastly, stinging nettle extract, which can actually reduce histamine effects and allergic responses. And then there are gut support nutrients, such as L-glutamine, which supports the intestinal lining and repair, zinc, which is a cofactor for the DAO enzyme and supports your immune function. And of course, magnesium, which helps reduce inflammation and supports nervous system balance. And so now some lifestyle strategies that you can do if you have histamine intolerance. And first and foremost is going to be managing stress. So chronic stress triggers histamine release from your mast cells, which can worsen symptoms. So it's very important to use stress reduction techniques such as mindfulness meditation, deep breathing exercises, gentle yoga, and regular physical activity tailored to your fitness level. And these can all be very beneficial to support your histamine balance. And then sleep optimization is crucial because histamine plays a role in your wake sleep cycle. So too much histamine can cause insomnia or poor sleep quality. So support your circadian rhythm by maintaining a consistent sleep wake time by minimizing your blue light exposure before bedtime, I would say an hour to two hours before bed, turn off computers and cell phones, create a calming bedtime routine, and also avoid stimulants late in the day, especially caffeine if your CYP1A2 gene indicates that you're a slow metabolizer. And the last lifestyle strategy that I'll cover today is functional testing and personalized care. So it's important to consider lab tests like serum or plasma histamine levels, as well as checking your DAO enzyme activity and looking at methylation markers like homocysteine. And and I covered an entire video on homocysteine. If you missed that, go ahead and check it out. You can also do a comprehensive stool analysis for gut dysbiosis, especially if you have the DAO gene variants 
and gut symptoms like gas and bloating. Since histamine intolerance overlaps with inflammation, methylation, and gut health, a holistic personalized plan guided by your genetics and labs is the most effective way forward. So it's very important to work with a healthcare practitioner who actually understands the interplay between histamine, genetics, and mental health for tailored guidance and safe supplementation. So if you're interested in this type of personalized approach and guidance, check out the link in the description for the genetic testing packages that I offer. And so now for my final thoughts. Histamine intolerance is a hidden but powerful factor in mental health that often goes unnoticed, especially when genetics impact your ability to clear histamine effectively. But by understanding your genetics and how your unique gene variants influence histamine metabolism, you can better tailor your diet, supplements, and your lifestyle to support your brain and mood. So if you wanna dive deeper into your genetics and how they affect your mental wellness, please check out my other videos on genetics and mental health. I have an entire playlist that you can watch. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more mental health tips that actually move the needle. And drop your questions or share your experience with histamine intolerance down in the comment section below. As always, I thank you for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.